What is a markup language? To mark up a text means to add extra computer-readable information in the form of tags, also called elements. HTML is a markup language. Markup languages are all over the place, even though they are usually in the background. Normally, other software languages transform markup languages into something that is easier for us to read, like on a web page or an ebook. What we care about is something called semantic markup. This markup describes types, relationships, and properties. So what does XML mean? XML is extensible markup language. But what is extensible? Extensible means that this language is expandable. As long as I follow some basic rules of syntax, I can make up my own vocabulary as I go along. So what's up with all those bracketed words you've been seeing? Remember how XML is a language? Those brackets are part of the grammar of XML. Text strings inside of brackets are called elements, or tags. They are nested, and they are hierarchical. But what does this actually mean? Let's say I have a box. I put some stuff in the box, and I want to describe the relationship between the items and the box. I could just make a list, but while I understand that this means the objects are in the box, the computer cannot understand this. It just sees a string of characters. I need to use a markup language to make my list machine readable. Does the computer know what containers and items are? The words are just placeholders for an element that exists in a certain relationship with other elements in a hierarchy. So now I could write a computer program to help me do things like ask, how many items are in box one? Do I have any boxes without books in them? Or get me a list of items in each box, sort them alphabetically, and then number them. Because I gave these elements a structured relationship, I can manipulate them with other kinds of computer code. If I just had lists of words and nothing else, I would have to do this all by hand. So how do we know that when I use the tag container that I mean the same thing as someone else who uses the same container tag? In XML, we don't. Enter the TEI. The TEI stands for Text Encoding Initiative. It's a project of scholars, computer geeks, and people who really, really like to argue. TEI is the XML standard that humanists use and generally agree on. It helps standardize things so there is not mass chaos when scholars collaborate. TEI follows the same syntax as XML, but it has its own special vocabulary. This means that there are many rules for how to encode texts. TEI uses a controlled vocabulary. The guidelines limit what tags people can use. Going back to my example, the guidelines might say something like, the container element must contain at least one item, and this element must only be used to describe objects that have volume. This is where your knowledge and understanding as a human being comes in. It's up to scholars to decide exactly what tags are relevant to their project out of literally thousands of tags. There are also different vocabularies for all sorts of genres. Drama, film, comic books, dictionaries, many more. But here's the rub. Remember how we said that TEI is a type of XML? That means that it too is extensible. There is no one correct way to encode a text in TEI. You can also make new tags in TEI unique to your project. So why do we care? The internet runs on semantic markup. It is literally in every website you visit and every book on your Kindle. Remember how we talked about structuring your data and about smart data? Markup languages are one common way that data is structured to become smart. TEI is a commonly used technology in the digital humanities. It's very likely you'll come across projects that use the TEI. TEI offers a new way to think about text as data. Instead of just manipulating strings of text, now I can encode text strings to reveal to a machine relationships, types, and properties. You do not need to know TEI or XML for this class. Just have a general understanding of how a semantic markup language helps us interpret data and why the TEI is useful to digital humanities in particular.